Hi guys, it's Elaine here, the Animal Reiki Lady. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It is so nice to see you here, so we're gonna hang tight for a quick second. You guys who are catching this on the replay, you know that you can always scroll forward a minute or two uh, because we give Facebook a moment to let everybody know that I have gone live. And this live stream is for a new friend of mine, Susie, and Susie's new puppy, um, Ollie. Ollie, so we're gonna talk about puppy behaviors and what happens when puppies misbehave. But for those of you who may be catching this, hello, Amanda, how you doing? It's good to see you, girl. Um, for those of you who may be catching this video for the very first time, that does happen every once in a while. My name is Elaine, I'm the Animal Reiki Lady, and I help people create deeper connections with the animals in their life. And that's animals who share your home, wildlife, animals in captivity, could be anything. Um, and we talk about all kinds of techniques that we can use to help our relationship with our animals. So today, Susie reached out to me to talk about puppy behaviors. And I said that I would come on to a, do a little live stream to kind of share with everyone my suggestions for what happens when you have behavior issues. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that a puppy cannot misbehave and there are no behavior issues. The way that puppies act is 100% natural to them. They don't see anything wrong with their behavior whatsoever, but they do sometimes reflect some things that are going on around them and they are capable of feeling tension and stress. So what happens when that, when, what do we do when those things happen? Um, so I'm gonna see if Susie will jump on. I'm not sure if she'll get this notice or not, but it doesn't matter, I'll just tag her afterward. Um, but I wanna share with you that I today am giving you, you get the whole, oh, it's so bright back there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, over here we have Zoe, right behind me is Jack. Hey, buddy. Uh, and then over on the other side of the bed, is um, Shiloh. So I am foster, um, excuse me, I'm fostering this week for about, yeah, just about a week. I'll be fostering two greyhounds. Zoe was here before. Zoe had suffered a stroke and she recuperated here. So she had her rehab here and it was remarkable. She's had a complete full recovery. That's her back there. She had a 100% recovery from her stroke. We shared Reiki every single day. And right now, they're Zoe and Shiloh's mama had a little bit of surgery herself, so they're here just hanging out with me. And we are going to try to be helping them with Reiki. Uh, Zoe has issues with trucks, so garbage trucks, delivery trucks, those kinds of things just set her on edge. And she has come so far because she used to um, urinate everywhere whenever a truck would drive by. Now she, oh, she's gotten well over that. Uh, but she still shakes and she tries to cower and hide in a corner. So we're working with her with that. And Shiloh, we are using Reiki to try to help Shiloh overcome his fear of stairs. So both of these uh, pups are, uh, they're mature. Both of these greyhounds were rescued. Uh, they're rescued greyhounds and they just come with a little bit of anxiety and fear. And Reiki is a great way to help them with that. So I get to show you, I wanted to show you this only because I get the same thing, guys. I have the same kinds of things that go on with animals, have their own life, their own purpose, their own thinking, they're sentient beings, and sometimes we just have to work with them to help them overcome some of that stuff. And this, I'm holding this dog bowl because even my Jack, the best boy in the whole wide world, just ate all of Zoe's food. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> they are food-driven animals. So let's talk about this. What happens when your puppy misbehaves? For example, Susie today mentioned that Ollie jumped right on the dining room table. As soon as they walked through the door after a shopping trip, they jumped on the, he jumped on the dining room table. What is she supposed to do about that? Um, and then another issue is that sometimes Ollie will um, hide in a corner and cower, and if you were to approach him, he gets snappy and growls. And, uh, and what is with that behavior and how do you handle it? So the first thing that I wanna remind you is that any animal's behavior is perfectly natural to them. There is some reason behind it that is causing that behavior, and for them, it's 100% natural. So we don't ever approach a situation as bad or, um, or negative or something that needs to be punished. Instead, what we do is focus on the animal as perfect. I practice, you guys know this, Amanda, you know this in particular, I practice a very specific form of animal Reiki. It's called Let Animals Lead. And one of the six main tenets of the let animals lead method, this was the method developed by my animal Reiki master and teacher, Kathleen Prasad. And one of the main tenets of this method is that our animals are sentient beings. They are to be respected for the living things that they are. 
and we um, we use mindfulness and here comes the big N word M word meditation to help connect with them in a way that will help them naturally adjust their behavior. So when they cower in a corner, let's go with that one first. When they cower in a corner and they, if you try to approach them, they get a little snappy. I'm going to tell you, hi, Kevin, how you doing? I am going to share with you something that seem, may seem a little counterintuitive. Just don't approach them at the moment. I'm going to give you a couple easy steps. In fact, there's only one step that you really need. If you really want to make a difference, there's only one step that you need, and that is to quiet your mind. And right away, people roll their eyes. Uh, what do you mean, quiet your mind? Oh, you're not going to tell me that I sit in the corner with him and meditate. Well, yeah, I am going to tell you that, but it doesn't have to be quite that way. What I would suggest that you do in that situation is to sit quietly either near or maybe just in the same room as the animal who is experiencing the problem. Uh, problem is our word, not theirs. And just sit and be quiet. Just be quiet. Allow your thoughts to quiet down. And when you do that, it creates a connection between you and the animal. You may see an immediate, I call them Reiki eyes, if you want to look at your animal like this, but I would sit quietly, just allow my mind to just stop all the little monkey chatter that goes on, focus only on the animal that you're working with, and in your mind, just invite them to join you in a calm space. It's as easy as that. Invite them to enjoy to join you in a calm space. Welcome them, but we don't pressure them. It's called the let animals lead method. It is their choice whether or not they want to participate with you. But when you get into this quiet space, nine times out of 10, they absolutely will join a quiet space with you. Now here's the, here's the thing. Uh, first of all, when they do that, that's awesome. You just sit there with them and you don't have to feel anything. You don't have to do anything. You can't do anything wrong. You cannot do anything wrong. All you're doing is opening a nice quiet space that helps them calm and helps them readjust. And when they can rebalance, then their behavior rebalances, any pain issues, or let's just say it wasn't just cowering in the corner, but they're, they've got something going on with them. It helps their body do what it naturally does, and that's rebalance. And when they sense your calm and your peace, they will reflect that back to you, calm and peace. There's one more step, and this is a step that I find I get the most pushback from with my personal clients, and that is it takes consistency. One shot, one time, it may work that one time, but it's not going to be um, something, hello Jack, it's not going to be truly effective unless you practice this more than once. So I would recommend that when an animal, when your animal companion is not experiencing a behavior problem, that you sit with them quietly. Let them begin to find, even if it's just a couple minutes a day, let them begin to recognize that this is your space. This is the way that you create an, an environment and a relationship. You sit down with them quietly once or twice a day. I do it with my dogs every morning. Every morning, I just open that quiet space before I even get out of bed. I just welcome them to join me. In my mind, I imagine what a great day we're gonna have, how calm it's gonna be, how nobody's gonna finish each other's food, <laughs> how we're not gonna be afraid of the stairs, how there's no need to worry about trucks, that truck drivers love dogs and there's nothing they need to stress about, nothing they need to worry about. Just focus on love, love, love. When you do that, it changes everything. So it can be so simple, but it's so hard because we have to remain consistent in our practice. So what else do I wanna share with you? Um, that you can do this. So, oh, the other thing that I wanna share, thanks for the love hearts, guys. The other thing I wanna share is that if you're having a behavior, so puppies, right? Puppies will be puppies and they'll chew on shoes and they'll eat the plants and they'll run around like crazy. Um, in this particular case, I think Ollie was a rescue, if I'm not mistaken, Susie, you can correct me. I believe Ollie was a rescue and Ollie was given lots of table scraps and he no longer gets the table scraps. So he's doing a behavior such as eating his poo. Well, that per that's perfectly natural to him. He's hungry, it smells good, he eats it because all things smell good to a dog. I would recommend, and I always do, that it's a combination 
the health of your dog, the overall physical, spiritual, energetic, emotional health of your dog or your cat or your bird or your lizard is a combination of things. It's, it's, it takes a village. So it's a combination of you setting a peaceful tone. It's a combination of you working with your veterinarian. And you may even reach out to an animal behavior specialist. All of these things together. Uh, make sure that it's a positive reinforcement one, not one that punishes because they don't think their behavior, they don't understand that their behavior is bad. And one of the things that exacerbates behavior is giving them a guilt complex. So making them feel guilty or like they've been a bad boy because dogs, all they want to do is be a good boy. Sometimes they just don't know how. And so I look at it as a holistic treatment. And if you need help with this, so I, I, it's Reiki. Reiki is universal energy. It's energetic work. It's helping them rebalance their body. It's helping them release the stress. That's the goal of Reiki is to release stress. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable doing it, I can absolutely reach out to me and I'm happy to do a Reiki session or two with you. I recommend four actually is what we normally do because just like you when you go to see a new doctor, um, you might not open up right away and at first you might be very cautious about what you share with your new physician. Um, not that I'm saying I'm any kind of veterinary professional, I am not, um, but I'd be somebody new in their life. And so it takes probably up to four sessions for them to get really comfortable. But then I also recommend, not just recommend, the, the human companion has to be there on a consistent basis, helping the animal remember who they are, helping them stay balanced, leaving our stress at the door, not transferring our anxiety to them, which happens more frequently than not. And so my recommendation for puppy behaviors is, if there's lots of, of unwanted puppy behaviors like chewing, then you might want to reach out to an animal behavior specialist. Either you can go onto all kinds of websites, just look it up on, or if you need a recommendation, tell me. I know a couple people who do this online who are great. Um, or you can have somebody come to your home and do it in person. Um, in person visits these days are a little tricky, right? Um, Reiki, I do long distance. Uh, I have clients in France, Australia, Greece, Canada, and all over the US. So, and Reiki doesn't know any space or geography, doesn't know time, space, or geography. And so it's easy to do a distance session, or if you're in the greater Denver area, I can do a session for you here. Um, and I will also help you and teach you how you can do this really, really easily. And how everybody has this ability to make this type of connection with their animal companion. It's just that we don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe we can do it. And we don't let that monkey chatter ever quiet down in our mind. And that's probably the biggest secret. So that's what I had to share with you today, um, that these things, this type of situation will not change overnight. Puppy behaviors don't change overnight. And hi, Kelly, how you doing? It's so good to see you guys. Thank you all for joining me on a set, well, here at Saturday morning um, in Colorado, USA. Um, anyhow, it won't happen overnight. It will happen with practice. And just do it one day. Give it a try with your animal companion. Just sit there in a quiet space, allow your mind to quiet down. Just tell them in your mind how much you love them. Just start thinking about all the reasons that you initially brought that animal companion into your home. And you'll see day after day after day, the situation begins to improve. And their behavior and their relationship with you develops into something that can be the most special relationship of your life. Like with my Jack right here. Oh, where'd he go? He's gone. He's back over there, over there. And even with Zoe, look at the beautiful Zoe. She's all relaxed now. She chills whenever she hears my voice. And um, I'll be doing a couple different videos with those guys. So thank you guys all for joining me. It was so great to see you. Enjoy the rest of your day or the rest of your evening or the rest of your morning. And I will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.